Hey y'all, this is Tom Jenner, and I'll be showing you how to build simple analog balancing robots like this one shown here. It's probably not a very good beginner's project. If you have experience with beam robotics building head circuits or something, then you should have enough experience to build this. Um, all the parts are available at uh, Radio Shack at a hobby store, but you will need a, a power supply and an oscilloscope. They're going to make your life much, much easier. I wanted to make this about as simple as possible to duplicate. So what it is, it's a servo modified for continuous rotation with a wheel, prototype block, a battery pack, and a piece of wire as a pivot point. And it's just all hot glued together. You can build this in 20 minutes or so once you have everything together. We'll be using the common 555 timer chip as a current control pr proportional derivative controller. Um, derivative just means high pass. Uh, here it is right here as a passive network. You got your proportional resistor and your derivative capacitor. That re derivative resistor is actually optional. But it's just a simple um, passive network like this for basic proportional derivative. Um, here is proportional only right here as I spin around the potentiometer. Um, pretty much. And uh, here it is with the derivative function and you can see that extra little kick it's getting there. The faster I turn the potentiometer, the more of the kick I get. That's derivative control right there. And now I'm going to put a resistor in series with that capacitor and you can see how you can control the gain or how much derivative control that you actually put into the circuit. Since we'll be using the 555 timer chip as a current control PID device, we don't need any op amps. Uh, here's the PID 555 servo controller right here. You can see the password network into pin 5. Uh, RT sets the timing pulse, and it also acts as a set point um, because we don't actually have a, a set point with an op amp. Uh, RT is acting as that set point. We're using this circuit to uh, generate the pulse train needed to control the movements of the servo and you can see the uh, pulse train what it looks like right there which is you know pretty typical so here is the actual 555 timer PID servo controller we'll be using in this circuit you can see in pin 5 we have uh, a few uh, photo cells there LDRs um, that are going through uh, RP which is 15K and CD which is 10 uh, microfarads that's a good place to start uh, also, if you notice between the power supply and the servo, I got a 1 ohm resistor, and also between the power supply and the 555 timer, and that just offers a little bit of uh, isolation since we're sharing a power supply. So here is the 555 timer circuit on a uh, prototype board, and here we are powering up the circuit, just playing with it a little bit. You can see how nice and smooth that uh, proportional control is. And here is the details of the photo cells up close when you actually build the robot. Um, you got to have them at about 90 degree angles. You got to be able to differentiate where the light source is coming from. So to get the robot working, first thing you want to do is set RT, the potentiometer, until the wheel doesn't uh, spin. And you'll be at about 1.5 millisecond pulse. And then with the uh, proportional resistor and the 15K resistor in, as you move the robot forward, lean it forward, the wheel should go forward and just the opposite. If it doesn't uh, go properly, then uh, swap the polarity or orientation of the sensors. And this is proportional only, and that's good. You want to be able to get it just barely to where it might balance, and then we, when we add that uh, derivative capacitor to microfarge, you can see what derivative control gets us, and it's perfectly stable. So here I am just playing with the robot a little bit got a smaller wheel on this one. It's not quite as stable. Also the uh, wheel isn't perfectly round. And, uh, but once it's pretty stable you can play with it a little bit like this. And when I chop the power. And here's another one. I got the bigger wheel. That bigger wheel is a lot more stable. Where I can actually uh, push the robot, it'll uh, recover. And here's, I think I have a little more dampening, bigger capacitor on this one. And uh, some bigger swings, but it does recover. And here's what happens when you use too much derivative when the ca capacitor is too big. 
It's just like uh, proportional only, it just won't stabilize. Even if the robot appears to be perfectly stable, you can see uh, these are uh, current traces, uh, the current going to the uh, servo. And this is the pulse train of a robot that appears to be perfectly stable, no movement detected whatsoever, but you can see there's still a lot of active control going on. And there's a dead band of about 5 microseconds, and I think this is 7.3 or 7.4 microseconds of uh, control going on. So if you can do it with a 555 timer, you can do it with two transistors. And here is the schematic for a two-transistor balancing robot. It's just a uh, multivibrator with the, uh, the passive PD network modulated one of the transistors. RT is your set point. It's very important. You have to add RD in this circuit because you must isolate that capacitor, the um, derivative capacitor, from uh, Q1. Otherwise, the circuit's just not going to work. Um, pretty simple. Just a two-transistor multivibrator. And here is it made up on a protoboard. And here is the two transistor robot in action. This is just proportional only. Just to initially uh, get my setup. And that's close enough. And now we're adding in the derivative control. and two transistor balancing robot works. If you're coming from the beam community, we might call these circuits high-speed PID bicores. I certainly was inspired by uh, Mark Tilden in uh, my research. Um, if you're having problems Put a towel down and, and balance the robot on a towel. It'll add a little bit of dampening to make it easier. And don't get frustrated. You might have to play with different values of the P and D. Um, just keep at it, and you'll finally, uh, you know, you'll understand how uh, P and D systems work out once you just play with it a little bit. Um, so I hope you had a, a good time watching this video, and I'll be kicking out some more shortly.